Hi guys, Jessica here, and welcome to this edition of the Quotation Bank Revision Tutorials, helping you with your GCSE English Literature exams. In these videos, we take a key quotation from the text and provide a great model for how to go about analysing it precisely and provide you with the framework for an excellent revision activity you can do on your own. In this episode, we're looking at A Christmas Carol, following the format of our Quotation Bank study guides, where we take 25 key quotations and explore interpretations, literary techniques, analysis and suggestions on which essays the quotations could be used in. The Quotation Bank has guides for a variety of GCSE texts available on our website, Amazon or online, so go and have a look, as well as follow us on social media. And if you find this video useful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe here on YouTube. Today we are looking at a quotation that explores the significance of ignorance and want, and their effect upon Scrooge during his visit from the second of the three spirits. In terms of the novel's structure, it is important that during the second spirit's visit, Scrooge starts to ask questions himself, actively noticing the plight of those around him, rather than being forced to observe elements of society he would otherwise have ignored. It is only once Scrooge is open to exploring the poverty around him that Dickens introduces the two helpless children, ignorance and want. Whilst Dickens' use of figurative language creates a truly desperate, almost inhuman depiction of the children, it is entirely realistic. The children are an accurate representation of the suffering many children suffered in Victorian London. The spirit states, It might be a claw for the flesh there is upon it, was the spirit's sorrowful reply. Look here. From the foldings of its robe it brought two children, wretched, abject, frightful, hideous, miserable. They knelt down at its feet and clung upon the outside of its garment. So what are we going to do with this quotation in our answer, and how can the quotation bank help you in your exams? The quotation bank makes sure every point you make in an essay clearly fulfils the assessment objectives an examiner will be using when marking your work. So let's begin exploring this quotation by looking at interpretation. The interpretation of each quotation allows you to fulfil assessment objective 1, responding to the text and giving an informed personal response. It is important you don't simply explain what the quotation means, but that you give your personal response to its effect on the reader. In this quotation we focus on the fact Scrooge has begun to learn his lesson, and is now faced with the brutal reality of what his ignorance leads to in mankind, want in those who are innocent. This quotation depicts a development in Scrooge's journey from ignorance to enlightenment. It is key that he himself asks about the children. He notices them for himself, rather than have them shown to him. Scrooge uses questions earlier in the novel as a way to attack the charitable gentleman and reinforce his own views. Now he displays both humility and awareness of his own ignorance, stating... Forgive me if I am not justified in what I ask. The effect of ignorance and want on Scrooge is dramatic. The desperate needs of children, such as the character of want, have always been present in Scrooge's life, but his ignorance meant he did not see them. After being introduced to them, Scrooge questions, Have they no refuge or resource? to which the spirit responds with Scrooge's own words from earlier in the novel. Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? The development of Scrooge's character is clear as we reach the end of the second spirit's visitation. But now we want to delve into some detailed analysis of how Dickens conveys this idea to the reader, and we're going to start by identifying some literary techniques. As you can see here, Using subject-specific terminology correctly, in this case the literary devices used by Dickens, is a key part of Assessment Objective 2, and in this quotation Dickens uses a variety of specific language choices, as well as juxtaposition, imagery and personification. It is important at this stage to remember, never technique spot, that is simply identify literary devices, for example saying, this is a metaphor 
or suggests Dickens uses imagery as it puts an image in the reader's head. When we identify a literary device, it is important to analyse the effect of that specific example. And if you don't know what the technique is, it really doesn't matter. It is the interpretation and analysis that counts. So let's get to that analysis. We have provided as much analysis as possible. It is a great idea to analyse the quotation in detail. You need to do more than just say what it means, but also what effect the language, form and structure has on the reader. And I want to point out here, never use a quotation of this length in one go in an exam. It is far too long. Instead, take out four or five key parts of it, one or two words at a time, to really give depth to the point you are making. So let's analyse some specific details. Want and ignorance are personified to help Scrooge see clearly. Claw suggests the ignorance of men such as Scrooge. His actions reduce children to nothing more than animals. Yet Claw is also painfully human, creating an image of a thin, bony figure suffering the effects of poverty, clawing for food. The dehumanisation of the poor is enhanced by the description of flesh, taking away all identity from them. Indeed, the spirit's answer to Scrooge is that it might be claw, reinforces the indescribable nature of the children. This intensifies the reader's response when we discover they are two children. The juxtaposition between the animalistic fleshy claw and the vulnerability of children is so extreme that it makes the spirit sorrowful, Scrooge appalled, and the reader deeply disturbed. Furthermore, children are innocent, juxtaposed with what society does to them, destroying them physically, wretched and hideous, and mentally, frightful and miserable. By locking himself in his counting house, Scrooge does not engage with the reality of the world around him. He has always presumed that poverty was brought on by the poor themselves, and was oblivious to the physical and mental toll it took on the innocent and vulnerable. It is important that the list of adjectives used to describe them, wretched, abject, frightful, hideous, miserable, is lengthy, as it enhances the reality of the situation. Whilst the reader is often introduced to Tiny Tim, another innocent, vulnerable child, Tim's stoical attitude, reinforced by a loving family and a firm faith in God, means the reader cannot be allowed to believe that Tim's plight is as bad as it got for the poverty-stricken in Victorian London. The brutal adjectives and extended list in this quotation emphasise Tiny Tim's situation as not even close to being as terrible as things could get for children. Their vulnerability is emphasised by knelt down and clung. Many metaphorically kneel and cling to Scrooge, but he rejects them. Coming from the foldings of its robe is an image of protection the spirit keeping them safe from the horrors of the world. The children are brought forward, but cannot bring themselves to let go of the spirit, with knelt down at its feet, having associations of pleading and praying, and clung, enhancing the tone of desperation. There is a great deal to explore in this quotation, but it is important that you only use it if it is relevant to the question you have been set, and so we are going to look at which essays this quotation might prove useful in. Your answer needs to be focused to fulfil assessment objective 1. This section helps you choose relevant quotations and link them together for stronger essays. This quotation certainly provides useful exploration of the theme of education within the novel, this time focusing on Scrooge's education and growing awareness. It is important to note the spirit is not explicitly instructing Scrooge. Might be forces Scrooge to interpret the situation for himself with a look here, allowing Scrooge to reach his own judgments. There is also a painfully human depiction of wealth and poverty in this quotation. Poverty in the novel often takes the form of financial troubles, Caroline and her husband in Stave 4, for example, but here the physical consequences of poverty are made painfully clear to the reader. The vivid intensity of the children also creates a shift in Scrooge's opinions on responsibility. Earlier in the novel, he saw the poor as the responsibility of the unions or the prison service. After observing such abject poverty firsthand, Scrooge desperately tries to source them refuge or resource. This also draws the role of society into the reader's mind. 
The foldings of its robe are hardly long-term protection and sanctuary, and when Scrooge asks the spirit, Are they yours? The spirit is unequivocal in his response. They are man's. For a quotation containing two young, vulnerable children, the quotation is entirely devoid of love and tenderness. The clinging is desperate, not loving, and the sorrowful spirit can do little but cover them in his robes. The contrast between this scene and Scrooge's interaction with the young lad sent to get the turkey at the end of the novel is vast, and stresses that Scrooge has learnt his lesson. It is more than just money that the poor need, it is love and tenderness from those around them. That brings us to the end of our analysis of this quotation for today. I hope you found it useful, and if you have, do give a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos from the Quotation Bank. Don't forget to check out our study guides, where we follow the revision structure you've seen today on 25 key quotations, as well as being full of essay plans, revision activities and more. They're available from our website and other online stores, and follow us on social media. Send us a quotation and we'll try to help you out with your analysis. Thanks for listening and good luck with the